Hi, and welcome to part two in the Getting Started with AWS IoT SiteWise video series. My name is Dave Malone, and I'm an IoT solutions architect for AWS. In the last video, we covered simple model creation, asset creation, and tagging. In this video, we will take the next step and connect to an OPC UA server producing data like you would see in a manufacturing facility. We'll configure the edge gateway and gateway connector, which will allow us to see the data flow from the OPC UA server to SiteWise. Again, for this demo, we're a manufacturer producing widgets, and I already have my three widget machines created in a SiteWise model. Again, while this demo will only show three assets and simple tags, all the concepts still apply whether you have hundreds of assets, thousands, or even more. In fact, the value of automation and letting SiteWise do the heavy lifting grows with scale, even if the initial setup of creating assets and tags and hierarchies may take a little longer. So the next step is to connect my on-premises equipment data via OPC UA. For the purposes of this demo, we will use Kept Server EX to help me produce my demo data. I have it running on an AWS EC2 instance, and I've already set it up to show my three machines creating data. Here you can see the data being created through Kept Server EX's device simulator. To connect this OPC UA server data into SiteWise, I need a gateway. AWS IoT SiteWise gateway software is provided as a pre-packaged connector that runs on AWS IoT Greengrass, so I'll use that. For the sake of time, and this will be a little bit like a cooking show, I will pull my ready and pre-configured AWS IoT Greengrass Gateway out of the oven. I have an AWS IoT Greengrass server ready with the necessary IAM policy set so the gateway can access AWS IoT SiteWise and my Greengrass groups are connected. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to configure this, see the developer documentation for both AWS IoT Greengrass and AWS IoT SiteWise. A couple of things to note. In your Greengrass group settings, you will need to properly configure your Greengrass group's IAM role and edit your stream manager settings to enable stream manager as it's a prerequisite for AWS IoT SiteWise. Okay. Now I'm ready to configure the AWS IoT SiteWise connector on my Greengrass group. To do this, while on the Greengrass console, click on the group's navigation menu item. Then go ahead and select your Greengrass group, and then select the connectors menu item, and go ahead and click on add a connector. Here, Go ahead and search for the SiteWise connector. Select the option for the IoT SiteWise collect connector and click Next. If your OPC UA server requires authentication, you can create AWS Secrets Manager Secrets with the server's username and password that you'll need to authenticate against your OPC UA server. Then you can attach each secret to your Greengrass group and select them from the available list of ARNs. For more information about how to create and configure secrets, see the Configure Source Authentication page in the AWS IoT SiteWise documentation. If you have set up your gateway with a different path than forward slash var forward slash SiteWise, there's a place to dictate the path that you use for local storage here. You can also configure maximum disk buffer size. If your AWS IoT Greengrass core loses connection to the AWS cloud, 
the connector caches data until it successfully reconnects. If the cache exceeds the maximum disk buffer size specified here, it will automatically discard the oldest data from the queue. For now, we're going to use the defaults, so go ahead and click Add. Now we're ready to deploy all of this configuration to your Greengrass instance. In our case, it's running on an AWS EC2 instance. Click on the Actions menu and then select Deploy. You can track the deployment status under the Deployments portion of your Greengrass group page. Alternatively, you can use a CloudFormation template to set up a virtual EC2 Greengrass group with SiteWise Connector deployed to it. You can learn more about that in the SiteWise documentation under Configuring EC2 Gateway. After your deployment has completed, we're going to add our gateway to AWS IoT SiteWise. Now we'll go into the AWS IoT SiteWise console and select Gateways. Go ahead and click Create a Gateway and follow the prompts. In our case, we're going to give the gateway a name of Widget Factory in Florida. And for the Greengrass group, we're going to select the Greengrass group to which we deployed our SiteWise connector. Click Create Gateway. With our gateway created, we can now add our sources. Go ahead and click on the Manage link above your newly created gateway and select View Details, and then select Add Source. To do this, we'll have to give it a name. In this case, we'll go use Widget Factory 1 OPC UA Server. For the address, we need to get the private IP address from our OPC UA server. In our case, that's the IP address from the Kep Server EX instance that's running on EC2. Once you have that, the naming convention for the local endpoint is opc.tcp colon forward slash forward slash, and then your private address that we just looked up, and the port number that will be available for this OPC UA server. In our case, that is the default port of 49320. In this case, we will use the IP address from our KEP Server EX EC2 instance. Next, we need to configure the message security mode. I am going to select the same one that we would have configured on our KEP Server EX instance, which is basic 128 RSA. 15, sign and encrypt. What this does is determines the algorithm used for encryption and signing of the OPC UA messages exchanged between the gateway and the OPC UA server. Next, if authentication is set to none, we can allow the anonymous login option based on what we configure on our KEP Server EX OPC UA server. Finally, we're going to configure the nodes we're going to use for our selection. In our case, we had three nodes we made under the widget machine path that we created earlier. This will ensure the gateway only sends data from these three nodes to the SiteWise service. You could also use wildcards here to send data from a group of nodes. You will eventually have to map each of these nodes to SiteWise asset measurements using property aliases before the data is accepted by the service. More on that in the next video when we dive deeper into asset modeling and configuration. With all of that complete, we can now hit Add Source. Now that we've configured our SiteWise gateway, we can go back to the OPC UA server to make sure it's correctly configured to allow the gateway to access 
the OPC UA data. Using the OPC UA configuration manager, we will need to select trust to allow the client with the credential for AWS IoT SiteWise Gateway Client to access the data from this server. Now we've configured our gateway to start sending data to SiteWise. However, at this point, while the gateway is attempting to send data into SiteWise, the property alias is not yet set up to map to your SiteWise assets. So SiteWise will reject it. And if you were to check in CloudWatch, which is one way to see if your data is flowing, you will see that it is failing. In the next video, we will show you how to edit your assets and map the data streams to your SiteWise assets via the property alias so the data will properly flow.